let's both make a concerted effort to keep our answers brief because we yeah, are chatty cats. Uh, <laughs> I told them. I warned them. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, letting us share Swept Out off of your guys' latest album. Uh, again, you can buy it on where? Bandcamp. Yeah. Or from your website directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to buy it? Do you have a preference? No. Uh, I mean, oh, really. Buy it on Bandcamp and pay more. Yeah. Bandcamp's <laughs> great. Our website takes a percentage, so you might as well get it on Bandcamp. Dang on well. one of those Bandcamp Fridays. Yeah, Bandcamp Fridays, which every Bandcamp Friday is something that, that we... Uh, that, nice. That I went and bought some from previous guests that were on here, and then I... I was nice. like, well, I might as well throw one of theirs. Do what Darcy does. Anyway. Go yeah. on Bandcamp Friday. Uh, here on Jam Sessions, we uh, always advertise Bandcamp Fridays uh, to make sure that our listeners go and give all the proceeds to the artist. We, we appreciate you, Bandcamp, you. but pay the people that make it. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, Darcy, why don't you lead off with a question here? You definitely yeah. got one in the batter's box. Just before I... Uh finish off my personal questions i had uh one of your local fans mandy moriarty i uh, was i kind of gave her the cats out of the bag story that you guys would be here because i knew she was a fan mm -hmm. and Andy? she did write a couple questions into me i love let's it. hear it uh so first of all this is actually for kim Ooh. <laughs> you're in the hot seat baby. Uh, <laughs> no pressure she would like to know your influences as far as like bass players and stuff that like, who you look up to as bass players uh, she says that you seriously jam and she loves the heaviness oh wow thank you so much that's so nice mandy. ah mandy wow um i will say i think a pretty obvious maybe i shouldn't say that but it's obvious to me i guess is kim deal um, not just because uh, of our, our matching names, um, but yeah, the, the Pixies are a big influence for me um, as far as bass playing goes, that style. Mm -hmm. You know, I, li I like to play bass where it's, the bass is doing its own thing, you know? It's, it's, it's adding, not that it, all bass doesn't add, but like it's adding a melody or, you know, it's, you're listening to it because it's doing something different. And I think... Um, when I was young and I was first out on my own, uh, my friends were obsessed with the Pixies and we watched Pixies performances all the time. And I just thought, man, like that, I just loved it. I love the sound. I love that style of, of writing. And yeah, so that would be probably my biggest influence. Um, as far as like the tone, I don't even know his name, but he was the bass player for Eagles of Death Metal. <laughs> That's a whole other story. Yeah, um, we love that, but yeah the, apparently the, Jesse Hughes is a xenophobe. Yeah, so we yes. don't support we him. We don't support oh, him anymore. Like but your music, really, but not yeah, your ideas. Yeah, loved that band yeah. for a long time. The bass player that the like played yeah. live yeah. with them for many years. Um, it was just it, just a, an oh, amazing wait, bass player. Oh, is it the big beard guy? No, he's the guitar player. Okay. Um, he's, he does have a beer, but it's quite short. Oh, you're talking about the guy that got sick. Yeah. Oh, I can't right. remember his name. I feel like an asshole. Yeah. But yeah, if you look up, you know, videos of them, you'll see him. Um, songs like I Really Want to Be in L.A., mm -hmm. like that bass tone is just like my dream. You know, mm -hmm. I yeah. made Howard, read a cop, <laughs> listen to that song. As a um, reference. Yeah, and be like, tone. make back burner sound like make that. Make me sound like <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, I was like, this is what we need to do. And we had to like stop production for like 45 minutes to like to get that sound coming out of like yeah. my gear. Um, so yeah, I just, I love the fuzz. I love mm -hmm. the bass to be like a little more audible, like a little right. more trebly than maybe is traditional. Um, and in terms of your bass playing, if I can jump in and say something absolutely. about you, it's like, you know, for the last album, it's like I would bring a lot of the like demos with like the song structure and stuff. And like Kim makes writing songs quite difficult to, to predict um, because <laughs> her whole thing is like trying to make the bass just go in a completely different direction. Right. So I'm over there like just jamming on my fucking stupid ass bass that I can hardly play. And I just am following the root notes. And then it's like the really beautiful thing about Kim's bass playing is like you never actually know how the song's going to sound because she is so unpredictable well and she also just pushes so hard against sure. going if... with the root notes sometimes <laughs> and like every now and again we're like i don't know if that yeah, one you're just like just but play the e yeah but like <laughs> so often it's just like nothing that dave and i would ever predict happening mm -hmm. I think... that it's like it's a really cool added element where i'm like i would never 
But then this is the hook all of a sudden. Do you know what I mean? If like, I had to give a word for your bass playing, it would be articulate. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. And <laughs> How do you feel about that? It is that extra, <laughs> it is that extra trebly, yeah. those extra notes that maybe the, and, the, the bass, the, the bottom yeah. end, doesn't always get to voice. And also writing songs on bass, I think, adds that extra sort of like awareness of like where the instrument can like kind of go in terms of like yeah like I'm right I'm writing this song sometimes or I'm like writing this idea I want it to do this certain thing um you know so it's not just always like a lot of times it is like you're writing something and then I'm I'm writing something but sometimes it's I'm writing something and everyone else is writing something so it's a different approach I think than is like the traditional way most bass players probably work. Sure. Uh, Excellent. That was an awesome answer. Yeah, She's going to be very right. happy, actually. <laughs> Thanks, um, Mandy. <laughs> another little side thing that she added in here, too. Now, we briefly talked just before we started recording, I think, about that I just bought at the 45, and it actually came from you directly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, with your merchandise, this is going to segue back into her question. With your merchandise, like your t-shirts and whatnot, is that the same idea or like are you guys hands-on DIY with this kind of stuff? Most of it, yeah. Um, you know, Kim designed our logo, which, you know, you went down the rabbit hole watching the Black Plague guys yeah. documentary, but, you know, Kim designed our logo, which I think is like pretty effective. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's like, again, like we've just always been a band that like, you know, hasn't really had the money or we, we've signed with people that like kind of know that like we do all this stuff and they lean on the like DIY like aspect mm-hmm. of us. So it's like, yeah, I mean, we have employed other people. It's like my one of my best friends. Her name's Rebecca O'Quinn and she's just like a fucked up. I honestly think she's probably the best tattoo artist in the country. I would agree with that. Yeah. She, she owns Heirloom Tattoo and she's just like... Is that in Halifax? Yeah, it is. Okay. It's like a private studio. Um, you can, well, like anyone out. can book in, but yeah. it's not like a walk-in place. But yeah, she played in my first band, Milk Mustache, with me and cool. she has like done a ton of illustrations for us or like I do it sometimes. We had Alex from Midnight Oil do one. We like had our friend... Like the craft dinner skull bowl. Yeah, we had our friend Sasha him. do the Dead Broke in the Next Life next rounds on me like stuff coffin. but it's, yeah we just yeah. like is the craft dinner box that you can order is that something that you guys are doing yeah, yeah that's all me yeah that's i the... thought it might have been after i saw your media the food yeah. stuff man you yeah, knocked it out of the awesome. park the, well, the 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 pastel I appreciate the stickers you. Stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. killed it dude <laughs> killed it i like really you know i was that was a rabbit hole I really went down where I was like, what, you know, once we finally decided mm-hmm. on the name of the album, which like, thanks for playing High Hopes earlier, but we considered naming the album, what was it? Um, uh, managing, managing Expectations. expectations. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a response to High Hopes. Yeah. We were just like, oh, well, we didn't do much. I mean, well, we toured yeah. a lot. So much but for that. Yeah. yeah. We were like, oh. um, but yeah, we came up with Dead Broke and we were just trying to come up with like this weird universal concept of like, how do we visually portray like you know when you're super broke and it just came to this the cycle well just this idea of like food like what what would convey without language what is being too heavy as well you know without being like really depressing yeah you know which i can be i can do depressing well (laughs) Um, but yeah we just tried to make like this lighthearted thing and like what would it be and then a lot of elements of you know being on tour kind of came into play where I remember being on tour with Tom Fun Orchestra like years ago and one their drummer that was like a hired gun would constantly swipe like the entire stack of peanut butter sure, yeah. out of the fucking every restaurant we went to. So it kind of became this weird mix of like doing like, you know, when you're strapped for cash food, but also like introducing like the single serving condiments yeah. because it's just like such a part of our daily lives. Oh, yeah, on yeah tour. absolutely. I can see that. Yeah, um, yeah I digress. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, uh, all of that was just, like, stuff Kim and I did, and, mm-hmm. like, it was really important to us that, like, instead of photoshopping everything in, we actually designed all the packaging. Oh, so, it, like, it's, it's apparent. It's, yeah, it's great. Yeah, we were, like, yeah. well done. Take, we, like, printed yeah. off, like, shiny labels that matched the actual packets yeah. of ketchup. And and I don't know, no one, on. no one cares. No one cares. And it's just my nerd thing, but, like, there's no actual text on our album. It's all, like, even down to the barcode that's on the back of the box, yeah. it's, like, we we printed that out and then built the box so that 
it would be the size that would scan but like everything is just like actual Perfect. tangible yeah. objects yeah. so we like yeah. we made all the packaging we were we just like, in my apartment like i'm just like holding mirrors up to the yeah, light like, no 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 like, turn the mirror this way food all over yeah. the place just making boxes and of like the idea dinner. of like doing really gross food photography was mm-hmm. just a thing in my mind as a photographer for a while so it, like, yeah. it all just kind of culminated yeah, in this thing where, where you could be like okay we can do like an ode to touring we can do an ode to being broke but not make it like this thing where it's like you know we're all like living paycheck to paycheck but again we're, we're not starving we don't want to make it right. like this like political thing it's just about like you know the shit you eat when you've got 10 bucks left in your bank account until Absolutely. your next paycheck and- the town heroes of a video it might be poets mm. but it's yeah it's almost got that same kind of concept to it and it both things when i see those I, it just reminds me like i mean we're pickle county boys here yeah like we we can relate. Yeah, we've yeah. we've lived that lifestyle at some point of in course, our lives yeah, if we're not currently doing well, it. Well, right? I think that's the thing. It's like so relatable. It's like the universal language for like being poor is like ketchup and craft dinner yep. or like a shitty hot dog or yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know? or, yeah. 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 Literally eating peanut butter off the, yeah. the spoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just Absolutely. a fun way to like bring I think people look at that and they're like, Yeah, I get it, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. No, I love it. And to segue it back into Mandy's actual question yeah. there, because that was really my curiosity yeah. there. But her actual question was about a sweatshirt that you had on the site earlier in the year. I went and looked. It says limited edition. You're sold out of most sizes. Yeah, I think there's like two left. What, is, so what size? Is there going to be need? more? Like, can I, if I get her size, can you guys? What size she need? Up? We've got two of them. Well, we'll we'll, fi- we'll find All out. Right, yeah, you you tell Mandy we'll, to call us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could probably figure it out. Yeah, wicked. Worst case scenario, we'll give her one of ours. So yeah. talking yeah. about <laughs> being broke and money and things like yeah. that, I'd like to uh, maybe give our listeners a little bit of a contest, if that's cool. Sure. Uh, if so, for anybody that's listening or I guess watching on YouTube. Cool. Um, I better uh, transition over here really quickly. I'll uh, put up this one so that way everybody can see everybody. Uh, We've got a a sponsor for this episode. Um, An amazing uh, woman, uh, Carrie, who owns the Art of Divination, is giving a $25 gift certificate for whatever uh, or whoever is the first person to head over to our website, jamsessionspodcast.com, and click on the Contact Us button. Or the be on the show button. It all does the same trick. You just get like a button. Right. button. But here's the question that you must answer to win this twenty-five dollar gift certificate. What is the name of the online store that the dude in Punk Two Dead Broke video (laughs) purchases from? I made this. I know it. If you uh, well, I'm sorry, but you You can't can't win. win. Uh, (laughs) I've never won a thing in my (laughs) whole life. This one's only for the the uh, the (laughs) listeners. But if you guys can get in touch with us, and I mean, let's be real. This is. Uh, you know, th- th- our community is tight here on Jam Sessions. So if you just want to maybe call us or text us or email us or wh- however you guys want to get in touch nice. with us, do that. Let us know who the name of the online store is that the guy in the video, uh, who is, by the way? Dave Foltz. There you go. Our old roommate. Yes. Yeah. So Dave Foltz is purchasing some things on an online store in the video that uh, if you guys are cool, I'd love to share. Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. For uh, two, uh, Punk 2, Dead Broke, if you can name the online store, the $25 gift certificate to the Art of Divination can be all yours. Love it. That's cool. <laughs> I'm super uh, into that. So if you guys are wondering what that store is, it's uh, it's a very witchy store. So you can mm-hmm. buy, witchy, uh, yes. you know, uh, pendants and herbs Ooh. and magic wands feathers. and feathers. feathers. Yes. Love it. Oh. Uh, I have a pair of uh, feather earrings that I just nice. bought from there, as a matter of fact. That's all it takes. Um, but if you can come up with the name of the online store that Dave buys his shit from, it's yours. Fuck yeah. uh, so as you guys can see on the screen, we've got a really cool website up right now, like a motorcycle.com. If you want to find out all kinds of really cool stuff about these guys, head on over there and check it out. Um, and if you uh, click on over to the YouTubes, you can see all kinds of really cool shit. Um, I've, I'd like to give these guys maybe a little bit of a break and show you guys, if you haven't already seen it, like a motorcycle's uh, newest video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, self-produced. Yeah. So we, as we often do, storyboarded a really ridiculous idea. 
and we brought it to Jeff Miller and what the fuck is Charlie's last name? Benoit. Benoit. Yeah. Um, both amazing dudes. Really, really fucking good yeah. dudes. Yeah. But they just brought it to life as usual and it's gonna we gross be you happy. out, but <laughs> off you go. Yeah. <laughs> so you head on over to YouTube. Uh, YouTube slash C for channel slash like a motorcycle slash videos. And you go right here. Wait, yeah, you can see what I'm doing here. And you click on Like a Motorcycle, Punk 2, Dead Broke, and you enjoy it. And if you're watching this, the video version of this episode on YouTube or our website, jamsessionpodcast.com slash videos, uh, you can find out who the online <laughs> store is and get yourself we a fucking $20 gift <laughs> certificate. Here we go. Like a Motorcycle, uh, Punk 2, Dead Broke, uh, with our guests. KT and Kim from Like a Motorcycle. (laughs) 